Hey there, coaches, it's APFC here. You've heard the buzzword scanning thrown around in the soccer community, right? Unfortunately, many can't grasp its real essence and end up merely chanting scan, skin in a chorus of confusion. This leaves players puzzled, dented in confidence. To bring some clarity, we refer to the wisdom of Xavi, a mastermind of the game. He nudged us to acknowledge a fourth P to the positional play trio possession, position, and pressing, that's perception. Perception, as you'll see, not only enhances these three, but can revolutionize the way we understand and play the game. Today, we're unlocking the secrets to effective perception. We'll arm you with four powerful drills designed to help your players master the art of perception, so they can command and control the field. We've coined a term to simplify this complex idea for our players at APFC, the head up concept. This encourages players to keep their heads up, continually processing the vital information on the field. But why is this crucial? The head-up concept equips players to extract key game details according to their role and the game state. But how do we do it? We break it down into three critical moments, when the player could receive the ball, when the ball's on route, and when the player has possession. We'll touch on defensive moments too, but we'll keep our focus offensive today. Sound off in the comments if you'd like a video on defensive perception. The key to mastering this concept lies in understanding what to perceive and when. So, what should players be looking out for? It depends on their role. For instance, the second attacker or possible receiver should focus on the ball status. If the ball's being pressed, we need to aid in overcoming this press. When the ball's open, we need to exploit gaps for progression. Player markers offer vital intel too. If they're pressing or drawn to the ball, they hint at where to find space to advance, usually their blind spot. Nearby teammates help us understand free and occupied spaces and give us clues about potential future moves. As the ball zips across the field, players have a slim window to decide their next move. Here, a quick check of our blind spot can reveal whether we've got the time and space to control forward or if we need to shield the ball from incoming pressure. Finally, when in possession, players must tune into the nearest defender, their moves will guide our decision making. Near teammates also provide valuable insights on whether to draw the defender in or pass the ball to a free player. When should we apply this? There are three pivotal moments. The first instance arises when we are not oriented towards the game. If we are not in a position to directly receive the ball, we must actively perceive our teammates' and defenders' positions. This will allow us to adjust our spatial positioning, setting ourselves up to receive the ball after the current possessor makes the pass. In essence, we are trying to anticipate the next move. The second instance is when the player controlling the ball has their eyes on us. In this scenario, there's a likelihood of them passing the ball to us. We should check our blind spots when they're making long touches and their focus is on the ball. If they use the head-up concept to establish eye contact, we should reciprocate and try to maintain visual contact. The third key moment occurs during the travel time of the ball. During this period, we should check our blind spots to confirm whether or not we are under pressure. Understanding the pressure situation helps us make a more informed decision for the subsequent play. Once we've understood these principles, we move to the training ground. We'll introduce you to drills that hone player perception and boost decision-making skills. But before that, we need to appreciate two methods to enhance the head-up concept in our drills. One, challenging players to perceive different elements within a 360 degrees view, cultivating an adaptable mindset. And two, creating a realistic environment with clear references to gauge perception. As we amp up the number of passes, players will learn to use the ball's travel time to take a snapshot of their surroundings. By intertwining these methods, we compel our players to skin more frequently, in turn enhancing the head-up concepts application. Now, it's time to see the drills. For drills will help your players to enhance their capacity to perceive surround them and dominate the field. Let's go! In our first exercise, we engage in a dynamic 3v1 rondo. Here's the setup. Two attacking players are pitted against a lone defender in a confined space, while an additional player takes a position outside this arena. The outside player's challenge? They can only receive the ball through the gaps that the inner players carve out. This design adds an extra layer of complexity. It pushes the internal players to stay acutely aware, consistently evaluating if the external player is suitably positioned to receive a pass. The condition that the external player can only receive through gaps turns the heat up on the player with the ball, compelling them to employ the head-up concept. They must rapidly scan the full 360 degrees landscape to decide if a pass is feasible based on the external player's current position. This drill serves as an essential starting block to enrich your player's perception abilities, laying the groundwork for a deeper understanding of the head-up concept. 
Next up in our APFC Elite Training Sessions, we like to dial up the intensity with a 6v2 double rondo. This is not your average rondo, we've added a twist. The players are tasked with maintaining control of not just one, but two balls at the same time. To break it down, we divide the play area into two separate zones. Each zone stages its own 1v1 duel, with the added excitement of neutral players participating across both zones. So, what's the catch? The player in possession faces a dynamic landscape that constantly shifts and evolves. They're pushed to swiftly evaluate their pass options while keeping their head up and staying alert to changes around them. But the challenges don't stop there. Players positioned in the middle zones must flex their perceptual skills to identify which ball is under greater pressure. They then need to adapt quickly, providing support to alleviate this pressure and keep the game flowing. As we've mentioned, the beauty of this ever-changing environment is that it keeps players on their toes, training them to continually track their teammates' and opponents' movements. They're compelled to adjust their passing options based on where the pressure is mounting on the ball. This drill not only develops technical skills, but also sharpens decision-making abilities. It encourages players to think on their feet, fine-tuning their perceptual awareness a critical skill in soccer that can often make the difference between a good player and a great one. Next on our drill list is a dynamic 4v4 game, peppered with an additional three neutral players, one inside the play area and two on the outer edges. If you take a glance at the setup, you'll notice we've divided it into two distinct zones. But that's not all, we've also added four goals into the mix, cranking up the stakes. Each team is tasked with guarding two goals, while at the same time aiming to attack the remaining two. What's the objective, you ask? Simple, yet challenging, the players must find the back of the net from the halfway line towards their targeted goals. And what hurdles must the players overcome? With two goals to aim at, the dilemma lies in deciding which goal to attack. They must constantly evaluate the game's shifting dynamics to pinpoint the optimal attacking opportunity. This means staying attuned to the defender's positions, identifying the most crowded areas, and seeking out the weaker side to exploit. This drill situation offers invaluable insights to our midfield maestros. It sharpens their perception skills, allowing them to gauge the most promising attack zone better. This discernment aids in either maintaining forward momentum or deciding when to switch play to optimize their attacking strategy. Through this drill, we not only improve physical skills, but also strengthen decision-making abilities under different game scenarios, fostering more complete and adaptable players. Our final drill in this series takes the form of a 5v5 game, enhanced with a neutral player in each of three distinct zones. As previously mentioned, our drills employ two main strategies. We either create a changing environment with a more abstract context to encourage 360 degrees perception, or we design games with more realistic scenarios. In this drill, we're leaning towards a more authentic match scenario, but with a twist, we've added two rules that up the ante on passing and receiving actions. This setup compels players to continually assess their surroundings and adjust their positions accordingly. The first rule is a bit of a game changer. The players in the initial zones, the defenders, are prohibited from dribbling the ball into the next zone. They must instead pass the ball to their teammates in the subsequent zones. This rule encourages precise, thoughtful passing and coordination amongst teammates. The second rule turns up the pressure on the middle zone players. Defenders are now allowed to press these players in their zone. This condition challenges the intermediate players to keep a vigilant eye on the direct defenders and their own teammates. They must adjust their positions to create passing opportunities and manage pressure. Furthermore, while the ball is in transit, players need to observe whether defenders are closing in or holding their positions. Based on this, players must quickly decide how to control the ball, to shield it under pressure or to advance towards the goal. In essence, this drill fosters a higher level of awareness and quick decision-making, sharpening players' abilities to anticipate and react in real-game scenarios. It's a fantastic tool to push players beyond their comfort zones and help them become more adaptable, intelligent, and effective on the pitch. In conclusion, our drills today placed a significant focus on the head-up concept, equipping players to perceive key game scenarios with a 360-degree perspective. We explored the essential role of perception in soccer, as it underpins effective decision-making on the field. We tackled four unique drills, from a 3v1 rondo to a 5v5 game scenario, each designed to enhance different aspects of perception and response. We saw the challenge of a changing environment and the need to identify attacking advantages pushed our players to stay alert and adapt swiftly. The drills underscored the importance of being aware of teammates and defenders' positions, adapting passing strategies, and exploiting opportunities in real time, all integral to becoming a more complete and adaptable player. Remember, like any other skill, perception improves with practice. 
So, integrate these drills into your training sessions and watch your players grow in their ability to read the game and respond effectively. And that's a wrap for today's training session. If you found this video valuable, please hit that like button, it goes a long way in supporting our channel. Share this video with fellow coaches or anyone else who might benefit from these drills. And, of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our future videos. We're always keen to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments section what you'd like to see in our upcoming videos. Once again, this is APFC. Positional Play, committed to helping you enhance your coaching skills and your players' performance. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.